So we're going to go over building a capital growth scenario. Lots of different scenarios that we can go through, capital growth, cash flow, mixed portfolio, rent vesting, all those sorts of things. But this one's going to be growth focused. And typically they say it's not always the case, but um, when you're going for a growth focused property, you're focusing on that compound growth rate, which average in Australia is around 6.8%. So you want to be achieving better than 6.8% on an annual basis. Uh, but it does typically come with lower rental yields uh, because the properties grow uh, much faster than other properties. The rents don't increase at the same rate. And so yields are sort of closer to anywhere between two to three, three and a half percent. So um, building out just a growth focused portfolio, um, typical scenario, someone with about 150K in the bank uh, and they save around three and a half thousand per month uh, on an annual basis or a monthly basis. Uh, we're gonna jump in this year. I'm gonna to add to our portfolio. Uh, I'm gonna try for a $700,000 property. We'll see how we go though. Um, we're looking for residential property. Um, we're gonna go interest only because we've got a lower rental yield coming through. So, you know, we don't wanna be uh, contributing too much towards the expenses of the portfolio. For this first one, we're gonna take an 80% LVR. Um, so we're using 20% as a deposit. Uh, and then growth rate, we're gonna target 7%. We wanna be above that 6.8%. And then rental yield. Uh, let's type in something here like 3.2. We submit that, add it to the portfolio. The first thing that sticks out is um, with our 150K uh, worth of savings, um, taking out for 6% acquisition costs and the 20% deposit, we're actually not gonna have enough to do that. So we can do a few things here. We can either adjust the purchase price down or potentially use LMI. Um, let's say in this scenario, we're gonna use LMI and go for a 90% LVR. Um, which is obviously adding to the debt in the portfolio. Um, but now we've got 40K left over, but we've taken advantage of that LMI. But what we can see when we compare, you know, our the value of our property towards our debt, we've got 630K worth of debt now. Um, whereas beforehand, if we just went for an 80% LVR and we had that full deposit, we would have... 560k worth of debt. So just depends if you're comfortable having that higher debt level. Um, if so, obviously we've got more left in savings, um, but it might allow you to get into a better asset anyway if you are able to do that. Instead of going for a lower quality prof property, um, we can get a bit into a better asset today. So by doing that, just with this one property within the portfolio, um, we start at 700. If it compounds at 7% over 30 years, it turns into a $5.3 million property. Um, we can really see the power of compounding here as because in year 20, which is 2042, um, the market value of that property is 2.7. So it took, you know, 20 years to get there. And then it's only taking 10 years more for it to essentially double again. Um, so the last 10 years is really the biggest beneficial or the best time for the growth as the compounding effect plays out. Um, in terms of our passive income, uh, I just want to check our interest rate. So if we use a 5.5% interest rate, um, including, sorry, I keep skipping through screens, but including an occupancy rate of 92% here. So we're allowing for four weeks of the year for this property to be vacant. Um, we're going to allow for rents to increase at 5% per annum moving forward. Um, and we are using that higher interest rate of 5.5%. Based on our passive income, we're going to be about negative 20 grand this year. Um, then we ended up going neutral about 2026. And then uh, after 30 years, we have about 81K worth of passive income coming through just this one property. Um, so that's one growth play. Uh, let's say that we now have savings again in 2024. It'll come in 2024. We're going to buy another $700,000 property. Um, but we're going to get the future value of it. So it's going to be closer to 770K at a 5% growth rate in there. Um, again, we're going to go residential, interest only. This time we're going to use some borrowable equity. So we're actually going to take 25% um, of this property's value of equity out of the other purchase. Again, this is going to increase our debt by doing so. But then we're not too reliant on savings. You could do something more conservative, again, like 90% um, and use a chunk of that savings. But again, we want to uh, leverage off equity and we're going to do so in this scenario. Uh, we're going to go again for a 7% growth rate and a 3.2% yield. Submit that. 
Um, and uh, now there's a couple of things to see. We haven't really impacted our 2024 savings just because uh, we're using equity to do so. But the good news is we can now use this 130K worth of savings and use it to offset our debt. Um, so if we look at our equity position now, brings the portfolio up to 1.5 in 2024. We end up getting to 10 mil over 30 years with just those two properties. Our max debt reaches 1.2. Um, in that year. Now, if we weren't offsetting, let's go back to our offset assumption, um, which means we're not using those savings to offset our debt. Our debt is actually at 1.44. So by using an offset account, what we're able to do is, you know, reduce our interest payable or reduce our, um, yeah, reduce the interest on our loans. So we change this back to 100%. Uh, we're now bringing our total debt down to about 1.2. Um, in that year, because we are leveraging and higher, we're going negative 36,000. Um, so you can start to see, you know, if you had an income of say 150 or, you know, 250 combined household income, you know, taking 40K of that year um, after tax during the year. So obviously you get tax deductions with this, but during the year you'd have to pay for this. Um, it is a fair chunk of the household income. So, you know, we are sacrificing uh, putting more towards the portfolio today for high, potential higher returns over the long term. We go neutral again in 2030, and then we get to about 160K worth of passive income over 30 years. Now, this 130K, 160K might look good, but if we take our target this year, which is 150K, and we inflation adjust that over the years, it actually gets to 300K over that time. So we're not hitting our passive income targets. But what we are enjoying is some solid equity over that time frame. I want to go into um, a potential one more future purchase. Um, I'm going to go into 2026. We're going to go for another 700k property today. Get the future of that. It's going to be closer to 850k. Again, resi interest only, 80%, 7% growth rate, and a 3% yield. Um, so not using any borrowable equity, but just using savings. What we can see here is, you know, we go from circa 200K worth of savings down to about 10K, which is below our safety net. So the caution here is just to ensure that, you know, we're comfortable with this number. Maybe 10K isn't enough just to have left over. Um, so we might want to borrow, borrow some equity, maybe 50K worth of equity just to have as a bit of a buffer for the worst case scenario. Um, but again, this is good, these are the good checks in future years to ensure do we buy in 2026 or do we hold off for another year and buy in 2027 where we might have closer to sort of 60K left over? Um, but essentially adding that to the portfolio, what we've done now is we've crept above our borrowing capacity limit. So we bought our first property. Um, we could borrow up to about 1.1. In 2025, we could borrow up to about 1.3 and our current debt is at about 1.2. Um, but then in 2026, we can borrow up to about 1.5, but we're actually borrowing at 2 mil. So we might not be able to purchase in that year. We might have to wait again a few more years until we're able to do that. Um, and so these are the checks that we look at when we're building a growth focused portfolio. Again, it does bring our cash flow down to negative 60K in that year. So it may not be sustainable to do just growth focused properties, accumulations over this period based on the current assumptions that we've got here. So this is a really important sort of planning everything out. We're gonna take this purchase out of this year. We're gonna wait a couple more years for the portfolio to grow. We might come into sort of 2029. We're gonna get another 700K property, get the future value. It's gonna be closer to a mil. Resi, interest only, 80%, 7% growth, 3.2% yield. Um, again, I'm just plucking some years out of the number, so wanting to see some results. In terms of our savings, you know, we do have, we, we essentially flatline in that year, but have a good chunk of savings to do so. In terms of our borrowing capacity, we are still above, but we're only above by 300K, so there might be reason to go to second or third tier lenders or um, find a way to be able to do so. Again, it might actually mean that we need to hold off for another two or three years to be able to do this final purchase. Um, but in terms of our growth, 
We now build the portfolio to three mil after that purchase. Over 30 years, we get to about 15 mil and our total debt reaches a maximum of two mil. And we can essentially have that fully offset by 2049. Uh, and then in terms of our passive income, you know, we go negative 36. Then when we buy this, the last one, we go negative 43. Again, having that conversation is really important in terms of can we sustain this negative amount every year for the next little while, essentially going negative by 2035. Um, and then we do end up hitting closer to 240K. So just with three acquisitions, we're not hitting our passive income target, but we are looking pretty strong from a growth perspective. Um, let's say that just for argument's sake, we wanted to get into one more property for um, potentially hitting those longer term um, cash flow goals come into circa 2040. Maybe let's do a little bit earlier, 2038. Um, we're gonna get a 700K property again, get the future value, residential, inched only, again, 80%. Um, we might wanna go like even like a 70% LVR on this one. Oh no, we'll go 80% just to keep it normal. 3.2% um, yield, but 7% growth. And we check the portfolio. Um, yeah, we still aren't hitting our longer term goals. And so this is why not all every one strategy works for every single purchase. We need to alter and change the strategy as we go along. But you can see that if we were able to do this, we're now hitting closer to 20 mil in the portfolio from four acquisitions over a 10, 15 year period. So um, good to just do the numbers here in terms of borrowing capacity. Again, we are over for this this final purchase. But essentially, we don't hit that goal exactly if we just go for a growth-focused strategy. Yes, we are 20 mil better off over the 30 years in terms of our actual just equity. So that's our portfolio value less our debt. Remember, even though our debt's being offset, we still do have debt. Um, we actually own 13 and a half mil of this portfolio. So we are sacrificing cash flow at the end of this period. Um, but what we are gaining is 13 and a half mil worth of equity. So this is purely a growth focused play um, and, and how you would set up the, your game plan to just ensure that you are going for that growth focused strategy.